Hey, church family, I hope you are doing well today. And this week, uh, boy, we're getting closer and closer to Thanksgiving. So just uh, such a wonderful time of year. Um, weather has been a little bit crazy, but it looks like after the uh, uh, tropical rains come through uh, with the, the hurricane that came uh, down in Florida, once that comes through, it's going to uh, get pretty cold and probably stay that way for a bit. So um, it'll probably feel more seasonal here pretty quickly, but um, I hope that it is warm in your homes. I hope that if you have any needs, uh, especially physical needs related to the heating of your home or anything like that, please let us know so that we can figure out ways to help and support you along the way. And um, yeah, but um, the purpose of this uh, midweek update is not uh, weather, um, <laughs> no uh, public service announcements, but at the same time, you know, it is all of life that we share together as a church family. And so I just want to encourage you to keep each other in the know when you're not well, uh, which by the way, there, you know, it's a heavy flu season. Um, COVID is still very much sticking around as well um, in various forms. And so I just want to encourage you to uh, take as good care of yourself as possible. And I'm um, just grateful for the, the temples um, that the Lord has given us in our bodies and to glorify him in and pray that we can use those in good health, uh, Lord willing to help those who are not doing so well. So, um, yeah, but all that aside, um, just want to visit with you briefly about where we've been the last uh, week and where we're heading into this weekend. So as we continue in our series on growing as exiles in Second Peter chapter 1, and we've talked about those first four verses that really lay out the beauty and the glory of the gospel in our lives. And really, it's grace orientation, that it's the righteousness of Christ that puts us, any of us, in good standing with God. No one has good standing with him on any other basis besides Christ alone. And that is a wonderful, in a sense, kind of level uh, playing field. We know that you basically cannot be more pleasing to the Father uh, than because you are in the Son. And also when you have failed as a child of God and know that you're not living up to a standard that you believe that as a redeemed follower of Christ you should be living, then um, as we've mentioned many times in verse 9, it says that it's because we have forgotten of what it means to be forgiven of former sins. And so I just want to encourage you to basically just remember the gospel. Remember that you have been cleansed, you have been redeemed, you have been forgiven. Um, but in that, it should charge us um, in light of a revisit and a renewal and a remembrance of that grace. It should charge us to want to give every effort possible, every best effort to add to that trust, add to that gospel faith. Um, these seven things that are mentioned in verses five through seven, where he says that to faith were to add, first of all, virtue, that understanding that God's way is best and most beautiful and is best for others. Trusting that, we want to then add knowledge, which is information. We want to add information to what we've already said we believe and trust about him. We want to find out what those details are, just what is trustworthy that he says, what is good for others that he says. And from there, then, we add self-control, which is to, you know, this is before God, uh, all of who we are, including our bodies, um, and all the appetites that he has given us that can be expressed in God-honoring ways also has a temptation to be abused. And a lot of times, especially in trials, we want to circumvent the difficulty by going after the things that are most pleasurable to our bodies. And that could be lust. It could be food um, in, a, in a not healthy kind of approach. It could be um, uh, just material possessions and going after, um, you know, just things to anesthetize the difficulty that we're going through. So we have to be in control of our appetites. We have to make sure that our physical and emotional appetites are under control. And it doesn't mean we deny them. It just simply means that we acknowledge that the Spirit rules all of who we are, that we're not ruled by our natures, our sin natures, or even our fleshly desires, but that they have a context and a way to be exercised and, and satisfied even but in a way that is pleasing to God, according to Scripture. And then from there, he talks about self-control, we have steadfastness, and that's what we dealt with last Sunday. And that idea of steadfastness is simply, it's endurance. It's remaining under difficult circumstances, but in the pursuit of joy. And so, very poignant for the situation that 
these churches in Asia Minor were in, and also certainly Peter, who was in prison awaiting his execution, um, his own martyrdom, as God had made clear to him was about to happen. That as we look at that, as we consider that, that to remain under difficult circumstance, but with joy, it just simply means that these are avenues. And that's what James then points out. And we spent a little bit of time there just to remember that that trials actually produce endurance. And in fact, that's the only context where endurance can really grow. Um, in a sense, it's like a, um, it's a little bit like a greenhouse for growing in steadfastness and joy and love in Him. And so I just want to encourage you to, you know, not disregard that, but it also makes sense that it connects with self-control because, again, when you're in a difficult situation, instead of seeing the good in it, we want to avoid it. And in avoiding it, a lot of times we're given to our own bait and trap of our flesh, as James would put it, and we end up giving in to temptation and then sin. So we want the end result of trials not to be sin and death, but to be endurance, to have its perfect effect. Now, then this week, this coming Sunday, we'll be talking about godliness, which is really when our kind of our uh, vertical understanding and view of who we are with God begins to really start to make its way into the horizontal, into how we perceive the world, how we see the world, how we see others. And that idea of godliness is just simply what the kind of ancients, what the Puritans would have called a piety. Um, it really is just this overall sense of his, that we're devoted to him. It's a, it's a mentality. It actually even includes a bit of a feeling, um, not to make it emotional, but it also doesn't disregard that. It doesn't disregard the fact that we feel compelled to be devoted to him and want to see him at work and want to see the gospel at play in this really messed up world that we live in. So godliness really is bringing a gospel centrality, perspective, view, and sense to all that we live in and all that we live around, not just trials, but even as we view other people, we see them as Paul would have put in 2 Corinthians 4 and 5, that we see people from a spiritual standpoint instead of a fleshly one. And so as we talk about this idea of godliness, it really is also a gateway into the last two virtues that are about love. And so really, I think it makes it pretty clear that you cannot love as God would have us to love apart from godliness. Because brotherly kindness is phileo, and then agape um, at the end is, is that missional gospel-centered, even martyrdom kind of love. You're willing to love without any expectation of anything in return at all. So I just want to encourage you to review, review and revisit these things, but especially the work steadfastness and godliness as we go into this week being a small group week to just talk and discuss and even pray through, Lord, help us to endure well. Help us to endure with joy, not just kind of make it through, but just to really actually see the benefits but then also let it produce in us a greater sense of godliness that we want to see God in our really messed up, mixed up world. We want to see the gospel at work in our lives. We want to be nearer to him. We want to feel, in a sense, more devoted to him, not from a heavy, um, only dutiful sense, and certainly not from a legalistic sense, but even from a felt love and appreciation and desire to know him more that that's the kind of devotion we want to strive for. So, um, all right, that, that's enough for now. It's quite a bit, but um, I hope and pray that you remain well. And Lord willing, we will see you this Sunday. And may God bless you and keep you. Thanks.